for the folks that do not know Playmaker like this, what is Playmaker? What are you guys all about? What's their mission? What's your guys' mission, right? Playmaker's mission is pretty simple, really. Um, it's the best creative using the best technology and working with the best people. And then that's internally and externally. When did Playmaker launch and what was, you know, the first challenge, the original challenge that you're trying to, you know, the Playmaker was trying to address within the industry? We decided to launch in the cloud from the very beginning mm -hmm. because it gave us the ability to not only scale, but to serve a, a wide pool of talent globally. Mm -hmm. um, people who can work in so many different creative disciplines and contribute to a, a really healthy and vibrant uh, project-based workflow uh, with multiple projects running simultaneously. Um, that was not that easy to do before and would take huge amounts of capital investment to achieve. Gives us access to the very best tools that exist and the ability to pivot from one tool to another very quickly and very easily just by utilizing a fully cloud-based infrastructure. When you move to the cloud, right, I'm assuming for most companies, right, I mean, it's a big decision, right? Did you face any heavy challenge that you guys looked at it from far away and said, Ugh, I'm not sure if that's going to work, right? Raymaker that. was never on-prem. So we started day one on the cloud. We always just like to use the new or anything that's future facing or anything that will not leave us with a ridiculous amount of uh, technical debt to implement or, or a lot of legacy. Um, so, so everything that we're using currently uh, meets that criteria. Oh, good. Just even from an ease of use standpoint, getting the thing up and going in the first place was so easy and so fast and then it felt so slick but i wasn't really expecting what i saw once we ran performance metrics and that was laughably good <laughs> <laughs> i've never seen anything like it i've never used storage where the the numbers just sold the product by themselves Right. You're talking in some places, uh, other solutions, it didn't matter how much we tried to scale them up yeah. and how much you would spend, you couldn't even get it close to what the minimum spec cluster that Weka could provide for us would do. In terms of throughput, uh, and even in, term, you know, in terms of IOPS, we've been running you know, more than one and a half million IOPS on the minimum spec cluster that we have. Um, application latency in some places was six times better than the next best solution available. Um, yeah, and crazy. That, and that's what I was going to ask. What, what seemed too good to be true, right? I it, think it was it really the did. performance piece, right? Yeah. Once we ran those tests, it was like, oh my God, this is the one. <laughs> we are surely not going to be able to afford this. You know, that's always the next place yeah. that your head jumps yeah. to. Uh, there's a Rolls Royce out there, uh, but I can't afford it. Um, and that turned out to not be true. And in terms of cost, do you do, do you see a better value add on that? I see that there's no cost per terabyte that anyone should be worried about. Mm -hmm. If you start to compare things like cost per terabyte divided by performance, mm -hmm. then it's, there's no comparison to anything else. It's incredibly affordable to, to have a small cluster provide a huge amount of throughput for a, a pretty sizable company while still being able to spread data into a huge S3 lake behind it. Um, so as long as you're sizing correctly for whatever is hot mm -hmm. at the time, yeah. you really don't need to build a gigantic Weka cluster. And mm -hmm. that is what is genius about it. Could you have make a cloud-based studio work, right? Actually work without Weka? 
Would that be a possibility in your mind today? We tried. <laughs> okay, <laughs> share more on that. <laughs> we, we, we started off with other, yeah. with other solutions and we would end up bogged down having to find, find ways around really poorly thought out life cycle management, mm -hmm. really poor uh, interaction with S3, then left with these silos of data sitting around that we had no workflow to be able to manage or clean up. And now that's, that's all a thing of the past with Weka. Alan, in terms of ease of use for every day, right? How would that compare with other solutions that you have tried, you know? I think a lot of the folks that use, you know, storage or data platforms, they usually have, you know, a crew behind them. How does that feel from your standpoint? Using a Weka cluster for Premaker is a, a single person operation. I, oh wow. You know, as, as long as you have people who can react in enough time zones to cover mm -hmm. your business, uh, you don't have any need for a, an army of people managing it whatsoever. Now complete this sentence for me. I want to see you get creative on this. Without Weka, you would. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> Daily. <laughs> yeah, I mean, without Weka, my life would be much harder. My job as a, you know, a studio technologist would be incredibly difficult. Alan. Thank you so much for your time today. This was a very, very good and productive conversation. I really appreciate your time and, and thanks for you know, choosing Weka. Thank you very much, appreciate it. Yep.